previously on the Desert Doctors. We spent our first full day in the Simpson and it nearly beat us. We had some dramas with the bikes and the gear, but as always, we just made it work. We managed 160 Ks for the day in the toughest part of the desert, which leaves us with a big task remaining. So if you haven't seen the other episodes yet, go back and watch them. And don't forget to click that subscribe icon on there to catch the rest of the series. Morning sports fans, welcome to day three of the Desert Crossing. Um, I don't know what episode this is, I'm sure it says in the title. Um, <clears throat> we are 200, we're in the middle. 270 k's from Birdsville, 270 k's from Mount Day. So <clears throat> I think we've got 100 and, 120, 130 k's to go before we exit the desert and hopefully the dunes. <clears throat> and then we'll have another 100 and something to do of um, tracks, I guess. It's not going to be bitumen, but it's not going to be sand. So plan is 100% to get out of here today whatever happens whether we need to stop and have a sleep have a rest use like the last bit of daylight um, because <clears throat> we haven't got any more supplies really we'd have to we'd have to get some off other people so final stages of packing up and we get this uh, road on the show let's go Despite the task ahead, we started in good spirits today, probably because we are hoping there's a pub at the end of the road. It definitely feels like it's been a while. Once again, straight into the dunes, with not much of a warm-up for the poor old DRZs. Lots of traffic out here once again, so the UHF is coming in pretty handy. We just listen on channel 10, and you can pretty much know if anyone is on the next dune or two. There's not much risk of bad head-ons really, you're going pretty slow by the time you get to the top that any close calls would be at like walking pace. 90% of the dunes have an S-bend track at the top. Not sure why, maybe it's to slow people down and avoid accidents, who knows, but it does make it a bit more challenging on the bikes. Now, talking about the traffic, it's funny, when I was researching this trip, I obviously focused on unsupported motorbikes crossing the desert, watching videos and reading all the posts. I just assumed there were heaps of people doing it. Well, now that we're well into day three, I can tell you what we have seen. Lots and lots of four-wheel drives as expected, like 95% of travelers. Then we have seen maybe three groups of supported motorbikes. Lads having a ball on the small bikes with fuel and beer waiting for them at the end of each day. Or maybe them waiting for the fuel and beer due to the trucks being so slow. And the number of unsupported guys crossing on motorbikes we have seen since Big Red? One. Yep. One crazy solo guy on a big bike that we passed in the middle of the washing machine. We didn't have the time or the energy to stop and chat but he was the only one. So maybe all them people along the way who called us crazy were right. There's not many people doing it the way we're doing it. Oh well, it's too late now. We're a little too deep into this mission to be concerned. Pado is back into it after a big recovery last night. He's in good spirits and riding well. Getting used to the sand and the bike is getting lighter. It's all helping. To be honest, you wouldn't know if he wasn't feeling it as he just doesn't show it. That's just the way he is persistent and resilient both good qualities to have out here all right day three update i think we've done about 60 k's today quite tough sand dunes uh, i think we've got another 20 or something 30 k's of sand dunes left before it opens up a bit with a bit of luck because the bikes are working really hard not as hot today as it was yesterday um, small issue with paris bike i think the internal fuel filter when it hits reserve, it doesn't provide enough juice to the bike, so we're just filling it up so we don't have to go into reserve. The reason he doesn't like putting fuel in the front is because it's heavy on the front, then we need all the weight on the back. So, a bit of a balance involved. But we get in there, let's get out of this place, and um, yeah, get away from this red stuff. That's enough, I think. I keep looking down at the GPS, it tells me when this big elevation changes and I can see the sand dunes. And I can see they're running out so I know the end of at least the bigger sand dunes was coming. 
but I tell you, there are some beasts on this track right now, just as big as the ones on the big red side. Some of them the track traverses up the side of the dunes because they are too steep to go straight over, plus they are all chopped up now due to how difficult they are and the four wheel drive struggling and digging holes. They say the travelling east to west is tougher as the sand dunes are steeper on the eastern slope. To be honest, I haven't really noticed any difference. The biggest thing to be aware of is that you can't idle down these sand dunes on the other side. You have to ride them. Obviously, you don't ride them like Seth Enslow and Krusty One, but you need to have the throttle cracked open. This lifts the front wheel out of the sand and gets you flowing down the dune. If you don't do this, you'll be all over the place and paddling like a demented duck down the sand dune. We have seen plenty of wild animals so far on this trip, but this is my first dingo. This guy was playing and having a great old race with me, running ahead of me and then stopping till I caught up and then going again. He had enough after a while and we parted our ways. See ya mate. We kept asking all the passing four wheel drives how far have we got till the start of the dunes or to the end of the dunes for us. 40 k's, 30 k's, 20 k's, it was taking forever. We had done 100 k's of sand dunes already and although we were feeling pretty good, it was still taking its toll. We started to wonder how this thing finished. Did it just end? Was it a gate, a sign, a bitumen road? We didn't know, but I tell you, we were keen to find out. And all of a sudden, just like that, it was gone. At the turning for the rig road before the Simpson Desert sign, the sand just disappeared. The track went to hard packed clay with small sections of sandy tops over the dunes, which were really just like little mounds by now, but it was basically done. I said to Paro, I think this is it buddy, we've crossed the Simpson. Well, we have a small issue of getting through another 160 k's to Mount Day, and we had a limited amount of fuel to do it, but this should be a walk in the park. We rode flat out. Me and Paro thought we were Toby and Chucky riding this stuff. Probably doing about 80 k's an hour, but it felt like 180 after that ridiculously low average speed we've been doing. It was awesome. The stress had gone and we were cruising and talking about what we had just achieved. That was easy, hey dude? Yeah man, let's go back and start again. Yeah, nah. Let's get to the boozer. Then, I had only my second rest of the crossing. We passed a group of guys that looked like they were on an organized tour and I tried to cross the center rut in front of them. Well, it didn't work out too good. I didn't have the camera on, but as soon as I hit the floor, all I heard in the intercom was Paro. Make sure you turn that camera on, Burns. The sand was soft, I was in good spirits and couldn't care less. Time for a break at the Simpson Desert National Park sign. There she is, the sign. The other end of the Simpson Desert, Mount Day, which we sort of officially means we've made it across the Simpson. There's a bit anyway, we're still going to get food at Mount Day, which is 150k away, but that's a little achievement. After a few photos of the Simpson Desert sign, we got back into it. The track opened right up now as we entered the open floodplains on the South Australian side of the desert. Looking nice and green, there's not many people that see it like this. It's an awesome sight. You can see where the tracks have only just dried up and the ruts are deep from the four wheel drives plowing their way through when it was still wet. We went nice and slow through this section. We didn't want to bin it at this stage and the ground here is much harder. So if you come off, it will sting. We start to talk over the intercoms about the different sections of the Simpson and how we would do it differently next time. We didn't really know it was divided into sections, we just thought it was the same sand dunes the whole way across. It would definitely help to plan out what section you're going to hit and when. Do the tough sections in the morning when the temperature is cooler and the sand is more compact and ease off in the arvo with some easier stuff. So if anyone doing the crossing is watching this for the tips and advice then this would be my best itinerary for a 3 day east to west crossing. Day one, start nice and early and head out to Big Red from Birdsville. Bit of a play on Big Red, some photos and then get back into it. Get past Day Creek and across to Popper's Corner. A nice and easy run for day one, about 150 k's. Camp near Popper's for the night. 
Day 2, get straight into the washing machine first up. This is just after Popples and is the toughest part of The Simpsons. Once you've done that, ride as far as you can until sunset. This will be your toughest day. Day 3, ride the remaining dunes across the clay tracks and get to Dalhousie for a swim. Then do the remaining 100Ks up the road to Mount Day for a big feed and plenty of cold refreshments. And on Dalhousie, that's where we're headed right now. Time for a well-earned bath. Dalhousie Springs for a well-earned dip in the creek. First wash in three days, huh, Paro? Yeah. <laughs> Are we starting to smell or what? <laughs> yeah, that's right here. After three days in the desert, so refreshing to jump into like 40 degree water. <laughs> but the fish are cleaning us. 70 more Ks to the boozer. Get in. Enough swimming for one day. 70 Ks to the pub, Paro. Lead the way. Oh, oh, we got a bit of a fuel issue to solve first. How are you going now? We're going to be running on vapors when we get to this pub. Let's see how we go. Last 10 litres of juice. Um, we've got 70 k's to go to the pub. I probably got 20 k's left in that tank. Paro's got much less. Much less. Underestimated. So we're going to split it 65 35, I reckon. And uh, hopefully we can both get there. Otherwise, he, he's not a good cheerer. Otherwise, Pat is going to get very thirsty tonight. I'll be hitching a ride. Oh. All right, I think I should do us. It's going to get us to the pub on vapors. But that's all we need, Paro. Let's go. After a nice 40 degree, not so refreshing swim, we gear back up and transfer some fuel around for the final stretch into town. Well, Mount Day. It's not really a town, it's just a pub, but we'll take it. Nice and easy, freshly graded roads now for the 70k stretch into Mount Day. A good time to reflect on what we had just done. Crossing the mighty Simpson Desert unsupported on dirt bikes carrying everything on these lightweight tractors all the fuel water camping equipment food and spares these drz's just ate it all up outstanding machines for this mission if you took any one part of the crossing and looked at it it's not really that hard but when you bundle it all in with the distance remoteness the weight of the bikes the unknown and the worry of what could go wrong it's a tough old gig as a lover of hard enduro, I need that hill or creek or really tough section in any of my rides to be satisfied. I need something to remember the ride by and talk about it at the end of the day. And on this ride, the Simpson Desert must have been that section. But we are only a quarter of the way through the 8000k trip we have planned. Would there be another challenge like that? Well, you're just going to have to subscribe to find out. The Simpsons should be on everyone's list to do, whether it be in a nice camper van setup or solo and support it on a bike. It's an amazing experience and a memory that will last a lifetime, and there's no doubt I will be back for another go someday. We took 80 litres of juice across between us. My bike used about 30 litres and Paddles used about 40. This was due to his carby issue and we rolled into Mount Day with about 5 litres each left. We just love living on the edge. Young man, barely alive. Barely alive. Well, what do you think? Was it easier or harder than you thought it was going to be? Harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah? Yeah, it doesn't look that hard in the brushes. <laughs> <laughs> What's he expect when he comes out of two with a hard enduro addict? <laughs> we made it people, we made it. I'm not sure if the last video Took, so I'll say it all again. Three days. 
550 k's we've got no water left very little fuel left a little bit of food left and that was tough that was tough the bikes took an absolute beating we had clutch problems carby issues leaking seals a little bit nothing nothing big though but uh, there were some big decisions made on the first day unfortunately we lost grant early on in the first day due to a uh, calf injury but we was sort of lucky that he did it really early on i guess it would have been bad in the middle that was a big day today 260 k's the last day double crossing oh, i wouldn't want to go back tomorrow and do that again huh proud of saying no yeah. crazy that's it for now time for a beer chat later after a massive three days in the desert We've decided to treat ourselves to a little cabin in Mount Day Station. There she is. Let's go and check it out. Ooh. This'll do. The more luxury than we've had in the last two days. Very nice. You turn this air conditioning on tonight. I'll tell you that for free. Put your money away. Scored a winner for tonight, people! We finally got to the pub, and well, it was a large night. The beers flowed, and we fair dinkum had one of the best steaks I've had in my life. A great, iconic Aussie Outback pub in the middle of Whoop Whoop, or nowhere if you're not from Australia. A great finishing line for all, and we finally get to taste that carrot that has been dangling in front of us for 550Ks. I'll leave you to watch the rest of the video, Hope you enjoyed the episode and got some tips people, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next episode where we head towards the war zone that is Alice Springs. Can't be worse than the three days we just had in the day. Ah, oh, it is worse. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Simpsons episode. Kill me. Yeah, kill, kill me. me. Exactly. <laughs> kill me. Oh.